It's Matt from Z93's Morning After, live at the Sonic Temple Art and Music Festival. I'm joined by Jason Elon Butler from the Fever 333. And uh, last year, you guys opened the show, Rock on the Range then, on one of the smaller side stages. Now this year, you've made the leap. You are on the main stage, second band to play. That's, I mean, in one year, they don't often have bands repeat years first off, and then to go from side stage to main stage in a year is a, a pretty big jump. Yeah, man, I, I really, and I have to say this, it's really, you know, uh, Gary and Danny, DWP, the whole team as a whole, it's really, it, they just believe, man, and, and I have to just be so, so grateful, and we are so, so grateful, so that is amazing, but really, for everybody that listens and sees this, understand that it's about a group of people making some real, real shit happen, and, and that's DWP, that's, that's, that's the whole crew. Now, does the, uh, does the performance change at all for you guys going from the, the, the small stage to the, the main stage? I mean, I've seen your demonstrations. I know that the venues really don't matter. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's all kind of the same thing, really. It's just um, trying to make sure that we create a space, no matter where we are, for people to be able to, you know, for the, to allow them to, to express themselves and to have a, a time where they feel open enough to at least have a conversation or at least uh, represent themselves as who they know they are. 2018-2019, uh, big years for Fever 333. You guys have kind of built uh, your reputation on your live shows. You had the EP out, Made in America, and then you finally get the uh, the full length out. How did it feel to finally, after building up the band through these live shows, how did it feel to finally have that full length out? It was great, man. It was really just uh, sort of an answer to everything you were saying. You know, the live show and the EP, sort of a, a response and, and really prove ourselves as, again, there's a very large artistic component to this whole thing. and. You know, I think that that has to run concurrently alongside the activism, alongside the live performance, and we wanted to make sure that we could uh, substantiate what we were, uh, I guess, what was growing behind us with, with everything prior to the album. So we feel really good about it. We feel like people have invested themselves in a really, really organic way, authentic way. So we feel, again, just really, really lucky and very fortunate to be where we are right now. Was it difficult to get the, uh, the vibe from the live shows in a recorded setting? No, nah, luckily, you know, we work um, in, in the recording settings. We have uh, Travis Barker and John Feldman. And John is really, really good at just pulling everything out of you while he has you. And I love working. in the way that John operates is actually ideal for me. Uh, same goes with Travis. Travis is very, very willing to try everything and to keep pushing and to, to transmute things and to transform things into things that we feel could be better or more potent. So between the two of them, uh, I think it was really quite easy and, and encouraging to create a setting that was uh, comparable to the live one. Joined by Jason from uh, the Fever 333, and uh, not only did you release the new album, but uh, you guys got a Grammy nomination. How do you how do you find out about something like that? You, do, you, do you get a call? Does somebody from the Grammys call? Your management call? Do you get an email or a text message? You get all of those things. <laughs> Literally everyone called me. Management, our producers, John, Travis, uh, Label, my lawyer. <laughs> I was getting text messages. I was getting e emails, and I was driving in a small town, a, like through a small area in Sicily at the time with my wife and son so I thought oh this is it we've been dropped from the label <laughs> and that's what I really thought had happened and then I finally I think the first person I spoke with was John uh, John Feldman and he had told me he said uh, congratulations on being a Grammy nominated artist and I, I was like oh so I'm not getting dropped from the label <laughs> he said no it's uh, actually quite the opposite so yeah, that's kind of how it all went down and you guys actually went to the awards ceremony. It's weird going through the, the videos from the Grammys and then all of a sudden uh, Fever 333 is on the red carpet. Yeah, you're telling me, man. It was <laughs> it was just a trip to be there, really. We wanted to create a presence uh, as best we could alongside all these you know, very um, noteworthy and remarkable artists. So we were really just utilizing the platform to, to uh, you know, push the messaging forward and, and, and offer a sense of representation, especially for people of color in rock music, specifically within the Grammy uh, Academy. It was a bit weird to watch those videos, watch that coverage, and see you guys have to do like the "What are you wearing?" and have to do the turn in the video and explain, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the uh, the uh, the stuff you guys were wearing. It was odd. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why we wore what we wore. That's why we made sure the the logo and the branding was all there, so that people ask questions about the message versus you know who made it. Yeah, right. So last year when you were here, we talked a lot about gun control. I believe the, the, the day that you guys played last year, there was a uh, mass shooting on that same day, and we spent a lot of time talking about that. It's one year later, uh, nothing really has changed. I know, man, and that's the thing is we have to keep talking about it. We have to, we can't be afraid to discuss things that are confronting and the things that are quite damaging and problematic to us, obviously as a country, but think about, think about our youth. Think about the, 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 the children, quite literally children that are being 
killed by these things due to uh, lack of resource when it comes to mental health, lack of awareness, um, too, too, too simple of acquisition of firearms, all these different things. And again, I'm not asking people to throw their guns in the fire. I'm just asking them to think, sec- you know, think twice before they promote or encourage or, or um, let go, uh, le- uh, support legislation that's going to make the, all these things a little more easy in, in, in the worst ways. And not only do we have the, the gun control issue, but now you've got states that are trying to, uh, you know, affect women's rights and change things and, 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 and control women's bodies. It's, uh, I mean, just when you think things maybe are, they are getting better, they end up getting much, much worse. Yeah, well, you know, I think that it's a pendulum, pendulum uh, swing. And I think that throughout time, throughout history, throughout, you know, dynasties and empires and, and different uh, political regimes, we've seen that things need to, get them to come to a boiling point. And I think that we're seeing that. And... Uh, the only, I guess, the silver lining is that you know people are going to get sick and tired of it, and people are going to are actually finally going to get up and do something about it. So we're lucky in that in that sense. How important is it for you to have these discussions, whether it be in your music or through interviews or through videos or through your demonstrations? I mean, a lot of bands now are starting to talk, whether it be mental health or what's going on in the world. It seems like a lot of bands are taking a stand and having these discussions where in the past that wasn't really a thing. Yeah, I think it's paramount. You know, for us as a project, at least, I think it's paramount that we have these discussions. I mean, that's. One of the, the foundations upon which this whole thing rests is is, is open discussion, uh, dialogue, and, and again having the uh, uncomfortable conversations. So you guys have the album out. You guys are touring right now. What's the plan for the rest of 2019 and looking forward to 2020? Yeah, continuing to do this uh, series of demonstrations throughout the world. Really uh, pushing the messaging forward, opening more spaces, creating more spaces for people to be who they are, or, or you know recognize their power empower themselves and uh, to release more music we're going to keep putting out uh, music as frequently as possible before releasing another album we're going to put out just as much as we can standalone well last year i got stuck in traffic when you guys were on stage so i'm happy that i'm here this year and i get to see you guys on the main stage it's going to be incredible to see you guys perform in such a large atmosphere i'm excited for it thank you brother i appreciate it man thank you for letting them know